impact on Indian societal values. Law Minister Rijiju calls it a policy matter. Five judge constitution bench to decide. Will India join same sex marriage club? Is the center on the wrong side of equal rights? Big focus on news track. There's clearly more acceptance towards people of a different sexual orientation in our country now, but has thinking evolved to a stage where same-sex marriages can be legally accepted? We'd look at that. Here are the headlines. I'm tracking them. No end to parliament furore over Rahul Gandhi's remarks. BJP reiterates apology demand. Gandhi's trusted lieutenant Sam Pitroda accuses the BJP of orchestrating the attack against Rahul. India's Oscar glory takes centre stage in the Rajya Sabha. Lawmakers cutting across party lines to pay glowing tribute to the winners RRR and the Elephant Whisperers. A battle of the old guard versus the new in pole-bound Karnataka. BJP strongman Yadiyurappa claims Sun will contest polls in Shikaripura city. Ravi hits back saying decision on tickets will be taken only by the party. Complete chaos in Islamabad as cops descend on former Pak Prime Minister Imran Khan's residence to arrest him. In the Pak gift gate case, angry supporters storm the streets of Lahore as Imran cries political conspiracy. Another round of layoffs at Facebook's parent company Meta. 10,000 employees to be laid off and 5,000 open jobs will not be filled. On the 18th of April, a five-judge constitutional bench will hear petitions to decide same-sex marriages can be made legal in India. This after the centre had strongly opposed the petitions, claiming that recognising same-sex marriages will wreak havoc to societal values and that this is a matter of policy that must be decided by Parliament, a stand that has been backed by the RSS. Here's our full report on what went down in the Supreme Court. Yeah. कब डिसाइड किया कि ये बनोगे क्या अरे मतलब ये 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 नहीं कहते ये कहते हाँ वही सेम थिंग नो लॉन्गर अ टैबू इन बॉलीवुड जैसे आपका कोई इंटरेस्ट नहीं लड़कों में है ना पर क्या हमारा है Indian audiences embrace portrayal of same-sex relationships in cinema with aplomb. LGBT campaigners erupted in cheers when the Supreme Court legalized gay sex in 2018. Back then, a five-judge bench scrapped the colonial law, section 377, as arbitrary and manifestly unconstitutional. And on Monday, the Supreme Court referred petitions seeking legal recognition of the same-sex marriages to a constitutional bench for adjudication, calling it a seminal issue. The justices insisted the matter has raised an important constitutional question. The government said the issue can be debated and decided decided upon only by Parliament. The court hearing is to begin on April 18th. When it comes to an issue related to the institution of marriage, then it is a matter of policy. Personal freedom and uh, personal activities of individuals, of the citizens, are never been questioned, disturbed or regulated by government. The RSS threw its weight behind the government. The BJP's parent organization said that the marriages can only be solemnized between opposite genders and not otherwise. Marriages can take place between two opposite genders. I am on record. The petitioners welcomed the Supreme Court's move to refer the matter to a constitutional bench. 
able to get a positive outcome from this matter. Uh, we were very pleased where the matter was uh, was referred to a constitutional bench today, as we believe this to be a matter of constitutional significance Thank and you. fundamental rights. And uh, it is wonderful that a constitutional bench will be hearing it. With Anisha Mathur in New Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Will Indian society accept same-sex marriages? Has the time come for same-sex marriages to be legalized as it is in almost three dozen odd countries? Joining us to talk about this very important constitutional bench proceeding in the Supreme Court, I have with me on the broadcast Niharika Karanjiwala, advocate uh, at the Karanjiwala and Company. She's amongst the lawyers who are battling for rights for same-sex marriages. We've got Raga De Silva, LGBTQ activist and author. With us is Sriraj Nair, representing the Vishwa Hindu Parishad. Remember, the RSS has also come out strongly in favor of the government's stance that same-sex marriages should not be legalized. And whatever needs to be done, needs to be done in the legislative court, not inside a courtroom. Desh Ratan Nigam is an advocate, leans towards the RSS. And we've got Sridhar Rangayan, film director and screenwriter. I want to go across to Niharika Karanjiwala first. Given the very strong position, Neharika, the center has taken in the affidavit presented before the Supreme Court, what makes you hopeful that when the proceedings of the Constitution Ben start from the third week of April, that there is a chance that same-sex marriages will be legalized, that the Constitution Bench will determine in its judgment that same-sex marriages should be allowed, given that the government is opposed to this and a large part of society too would be distinctly uncomfortable with the idea of a man marrying a man or a woman marrying a woman. Uh, you know, Rahul, we strongly believe that this is a question of fundamental rights. We strongly believe that this is a question of interpretation of the current law to be in line with the Constitution and what the Honorable Supreme Court has interpreted the constitutional and fundamental rights of the people to be. And in leading judgments, the, Constitution, the Supreme Court has held that members of the LGBTQ community must have equal protection of rights and must be considered at par with other members of society. They must not be discriminated against and they must have every equal protection. Secondly, they have also recognized the right to marry the person of one's choice as a fundamental right. So here we have approached the Supreme Court because we are firmly of the belief that the petitions and the acts that we have brought forward towards it have the capacity to be interpreted in a gender neutral way and in a way that allows for marriage of this sort. So I am certainly very hopeful of the same. With regards to the uh, impression of society, I am firmly of the belief that Indian society has the capacity for great tolerance. Even back when the 377 matter was being heard, there was a lot of opposition at first and the great notion that society would not be able to accept this, there'll be havoc everywhere, there'll be, it'll be a big problem. And that passed and nothing happened. Societal fabric was not rendered, everything was fine. And I'm sure that if the Supreme Court is pleased to grant us these rights, then society will again rise to the occasion and beat on You made an important point, and I want to put that to uh, Sri Raj Nair, because when the same question was being asked around LGBTQ rights, and just the right uh, to live as a homosexual, uh, at that time, the strong opposition that the societal fabric will be torn apart, that Indian society would not accept uh, LGBTQ people, Nothing really seems to have changed. There is a certain amount of space that's been created. Things aren't perfect, but things aren't hidden under the carpet and people can at least live and breathe as they choose. The likes of Neharika Karanjiwala argue that exactly the same would happen if same-sex marriages were to be allowed. I'm looking at the latest data which says that in 34 countries, same-sex marriages have already been legalized. Uh, that covers about 1.35 billion people. That's about 17% of the world's population. And even small countries and big countries are now heading in that direction. It really is only now, it seems, a matter of time. It's not about if, but when. Uh, well, Rahul, uh, we cannot have uh, all the dirt and the filth of the West to come here in our country. We are a very ancient civilization and a pure civilization. And uh, uh, we are absolutely with the government, uh, government stance and we agree with the government by uh, which is uh, which has taken a stance for, uh, of not allowing same-sex marriage. Where are we heading the society? Where are, where are we taking the society to? And uh, we have a culture, and uh, this this is absolutely a filth which has come from the West. 
uh, individual choices may be uh, maybe one aspect but uh, you know uh, going for a policy decision and the legitimizing is a different aspect no but why are you calling this filth uh, oh, one second uh, i want to quote to you and... what mohan bhagwat ji said the sarsang uh, chalak so... in an interview to the organizer in january 23 saying that hindu society does not see transgender community as a problem adding that lgbtq people should have their own private and social space you can't call this filth this is not the right kind of language rajna See, I, 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 I very Rahul. What I said, Rahul, I said individual choices are is a different aspect. But making a policy decision and uh, legitimizing, uh, legitimizing same same sex marriage, we are against that. I never said individual, uh, uh, you know, choices have, needs to be respected, which I don't uh, disagree. But we are we are talking about the legitimizing or allowing same sex marriage or you know uh, recognizing it. that is definitely okay. we stand with the government we are against it when it comes to an individual choice society is now made peace with the idea that there will be people belonging to the lgbtq community they must be given some space to live and breathe however the government and large parts of the sangh parivar do not seem comfortable with the idea of a union between two people belonging to the same sex that seems to be receiving a very strong pushback yes so this is my point we have the person previous uh, speaker just pointed out that we are filth and then in the same breath he used the word culture so how can culture and filth be put in the same context i think we've got our whole mindset wrong the whole way we look at this is very 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 wrong and we need to change that the moment we say that new marriage is a union between a biological man and a biological woman instantly we know we're talking about procreation and that's not the only job of a woman and a man it's it's marriage is a union of love between two people who love each other i'm married i was once married to a man as you may know i'm now married to a woman i've been with her for 16 years i'm an example of how society can change i come from a very traditional family in mangalore that's in india south of india and my family has accepted me finally it's taken a long time but they've accepted me we've raised children i've raised children with my same sex partner we've raised them with love we've give, given them a safe home we've given them the education that most parents do i don't see it as two women or two men raising children i see it as two parents raising children the intention is to come can explain what's the, the, the problem is if there is space already that exists and everyone accepts this four people belonging to a different sexual orientation then why not allow them to live together in a marriage why can't they be in union i'm looking at the countries it's not just countries like australia switzerland ireland uh, germany canada which have uh, legislated same sex marriages even countries like argentina small countries like andorra south africa costa rica uh, taiwan ecuador chile costa rica you know these are countries that have allowed same sex marriages why then should you have a problem well in fact uh, the laws are country specific there are no generalizations as somebody is trying to put it the the laws have to be country specific and in india the is our country ready and let me let me elaborate on that point rss has made its point very clear they are with the government on the subject now once no how do you decide no when you say the country is not ready i mean how let do me you decide that the country I, is I, not ready i'm I, sorry I, i i i was elaborating on it uh, i said allow me to elaborate okay we we live in a parliamentary democracy where will of the people is reflected through the elected representatives and once they decide once there is a sufficient pressure on them that they are smart enough to bring the law when there is no pressure sufficient pressure on them they are not going to bring any law so as of now that is why i say parliament is not taking up this issue that means the will of the people is not reflecting it there is no sufficient awareness of this channels like india today republic and ntv they all are awareness medium they are not decision makers about law so as of now the society does not accept it yes four people me and you may have a converging view on the subject but india is not just merely metropolitan cities or tv studios it goes much beyond 
So to say that some country has, uh, because of Western values, they have made such a law does not mean India with its own cultural civilization. But these so aren't just Western also. values. I mean, if you look back at so many stories from the Mahabharat, the Ramayan, Indian text, there's so much very common references let to people belonging uh, uh, to the same sex. It's let, not just let, some Western value let, that's been brought to that. India. Let, let me answer that, Rahul. Uh, I was about to make a distinction between decriminalization of the sex and the marriage. Decriminalization, uh, the sex there happens within a room, private. You can't do it outside, it's obscene. Yes, it is done. We have accepted it, but parliament is still open to tomorrow to take a call on that. That is parliament's domain. Now, secondly, marriage is a social concept based on religion. Believe me, it has, it has come out through religion, whether it is Christianity, Islam, or Hindu. All three laws in their own religion do not allow this. However, today, Today, whether our country is ready or not is an issue, and this is a policy decision. Yes, 377 decriminalization was also a policy decision, but that does not mean the government sh should also take marriage, which is a social concept, to be uh, uh, and, and be silent on I'm that. going to get Sridhar Rangayani to respond. Just one second, I'm going to come back to you, because your argument principally is that the, only, the best way to determine whether society is ready or not is through the will of the elected representatives, because otherwise everybody will have their own opinion and the will of the elected representatives at this moment is represented by the BJP government, which is in power, which in its wisdom has decided that they don't want to do this. It should be done in parliament. It cannot be done outside <coughs> parliament with, because this is about the will of society and the government represents the will of society. Government does not represent the will of the society. Parliament represents. Okay. That's the distinction. L let uh, Sridhar Rangayan respond to you. So, uh, I really think like uh, uh, the judiciary should be the highest level of lawmaking. And uh, when the judiciary, uh, when the matter is being talked about in the Supreme Court, I think the parliament should be silent and let the Supreme Court take its decision and follow the decision. A lot of times the current political parties are ignoring all the rulings by the Supreme Court. And that's not a fair thing at all. But that's so not I quite think, correct uh, because I want to go across. Now, one second, to Niharika Karaji Balai, because she's the lawyer on the show. Supreme Court is not the highest lawmaking body. It's the parliament. It is uh, what happens in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. That is where laws are made. Supreme Court can't be stepping yeah. in to make laws. You know, Rahul, I, I think what I was referring to at the moment is the question of interpretation of laws and interpretation of the constitution is a purview that lies with the judiciary. And in that regard, as I said, we are already strongly of the opinion that in the existing framework of laws, there is full potential for interpretation to be brought in that allows sex marriage and that allows equal protection of the law as the court has already mandated must happen to all members of society and frankly despite that i mean to people's religious objections because people are saying marriage is something that it has arisen from religious beliefs i respectfully disagree with that i believe that it has arisen from cultural and societal beliefs which are always changing but what have they to say about the question of civil marriage there is a civil marriage provision in the law, there is a special marriage act which we have moved to court under. If this has nothing to do with religion, can they remove their objection to no, it? Let that Deshrata Nigam respond to it because marriage is not just about religion. It's also about the special marriage act. It's also about uh, the fundamental rights. It's about the right to equality. It's about global practices. It's about the law as it stands and what the and likes the of Niharika are trying to do is to argue that the law should be interpreted because nothing is specifically written against homosexuals uh, and therefore uh, this should be permitted. And that's the case they hope to argue before the Constitution bench. Uh, Rahul, uh, Rahul, uh, Rahul, I just want to come in on this. Basically, like, sorry. Uh, Rahul, I've been living with my partner for 27 years now. No? And uh, we have been together for 27 years and uh, everybody around us has accepted us. The family has accepted the people around us, the colleagues, friends, everybody has accepted us. And if you're not allowed to marry, how do we survive? So basically, if my partner, if he is hospitalized, I'm not able to sign for him. That is a basic right a couple should have. Two people living together for 27 years should have this basic right to at least sign for a surgery of a partner. I mean, that is the basic constitutional right. If that cannot be enshrined by the uh, government or the parliament, I really think it's, it's going to be Let very Shizar difficult. Let Shridhar respond to that. 
if uh, uh, if uh, Sridhar's partner is unwell, has to be admitted, he can't sign for a treatment, and if they've been together for almost three decades, that is really unfair, which is what Sri Raj Nair, the likes of Sridhar Angayan and the others, are trying to change their right to be with their partner, to take care of their partner. Let me answer... Uh... So see, see what two individuals do uh, in a closed door house. But or this is not closed the, door. This is at a hospital, a hospital where he's trying to get argument. his partner admitted to a hospital no. for no, possibly is... life-saving surgery. Yeah. So, but then partner may be. See, fine, fine. This is, but this argument is absolutely, you know, a joke. Now the person who who is uh, who is ailing or is hospitalized, he has his mother, father, brothers. Everybody is there. For that, let's no, see no, the marriage of past I don't know how it is justified. See, no, Sri there has to be a union of there. man and woman. Where are we taking the human civilization then? No, one second, one second. Sridhar wants to respond to what you're saying. No, 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 and then yeah, get that same yeah, surgery yeah. done. Let's build on that same example. Just for yeah. hospital, yeah. I want to see that. Okay, see that. Sriraj, can you just let me finish, please? Thank you. So I am basically like almost uh, right now I'm 60. Yeah, I was on the same table between my dear friend. Let him speak, please. So I'm now 60 years old, and to, uh, very soon I'll be 70 and old. And after that, my parents would have passed away. Already my father has passed away. My mother is going to be there. So if they cannot, uh, they will not be here for me all along. And my partner is the only person who's going to be with me for life. And that is the main thing. Sure, I respond. If people get older, partners. oftentimes parents aren't there. They could be around, yeah. they could be dead, they could be aged, they could be unwell. If your partner now needs mean, surgery or treatment, away. then Sridhar yeah, really needs to be away, able to do right? this. Why but, should he be denied they that? Be right? away. They, the person who's next to me all the time is my partner. See, there are many senior citizens, there are many individuals who, are, who, who have remained bachelors all their life. Does it mean that you have to get married for this? And that too for a, a same-sex marriage? I don't think this argument is, uh, you know, valid. This is absolutely unvalid just for the sake of hospitalization. You think that if you are going to be hospitalized, you will not have anybody to sign. The, uh, for yes. that, you need to have a, uh, have a ma marriage solemnized. This is, this is uh, absolutely Sriraj, uh, are, uh, if, wrong argument, I believe. This, if you are alone is, as, I rightly, as I said earlier, individual no. choices are one aspect. But legitimizing... No, but you aren't uh, being able to explain marriage, yourself very we well. For, we no, are one once again, you, you've said you've opposed this, but in this case, uh, Deshratan Nigam, Sridhar Angayan has raised a very specific example. He's around in his 60s. He's been with his partner for 30 years. The partner wants mm. now to get some kind of a procedure done. <coughs> Why can't he sign for his partner? Let me, Why does uh, Deshratan uh, Nigam have a problem with that? No, let me answer your question in a holistic but, manner, the, the, within the, my capacity. The, yes, let me answer that. One at a time, please. I can't have everyone marriage. speaking at the same time. Let Deshrata Nigam so, speak. So, see, Ms. De Silva's marriage or Sridhar's marriage is no marriage at all. They might consider it as a marriage, but it is void ab any show in terms of the law today. They are calling that it is a marriage. It is not marriage as defined under the law. Please understand that you may give any name to it. It is no marriage in the eyes of law. It is void ab any show. It gives you no right. So as of today, the law stands. Uh, this is what the situation is. Now, so far as interpretation is concerned, agree. But the Special Marriage Act or the civil law one is talking about, that does not give a specific permission. If the parliament wanted, if you look at the debate or in, in, in the assembly when the Special Marriage Act was passed, just read it. It was only for the purposes of people from different religions. They don't have to convert and they can marry. That was, it was not discussed that it is not between, it has to be between same-sex marriage. So, in order to know the intent of the parliament, go and see the assembly debates. There, they were very clear about it. Therefore, the courts will also have to look at the intent of the parliament by reading the assembly debates. No, but you haven't answered debates. the question that Sridhar asked. Coming to that. asked I'm a very coming specific to that. question. Coming to that. His partner to that. wants to get treated. Why coming can't he that. sign for his partner? Coming to that. Coming to that. Now, our hospitalization system is such that even if there is nobody around, the procedure, they are bound to take a call. The doctors are bound to take a call even without the consent of this. There is no That's not correct. I don't know what hospitals let you've me, been let, visiting. Let me tell but you, that's you, not actually true, I'll, sir. I'm I'll, sorry, that's not I'll true. Give you, I'll give you the example. I'll give you the example and prove you wrong. Please hold on. If there is somebody, uh, uh, suppose lying on the road, he's taken to the hospital, 
Hospital does That's not look at the That's a different matter. Let's assume a procedure so needs to be done, which is an optional so procedure. No, they no, seek the family's if, permission. I'm sorry. If, if, I have done, nobody, dealt with these cases personally. They do not just start treatment. Rahul, You're talking Rahul, about an emergency case where there's an accident. What if it isn't an emergency case when there's an accident? Then, then they have to rely on other relatives. Then they have to rely on other relatives. If there is no relative, if there is no relative, the hospital has to make a call. They cannot refuse but anything. I have a relationship. I have a partner. I have a relationship. You I have a partner. He just has to sign. He has to be given the right to sign. That's all. The law should give him a right to sign. Period. It's as simple as that. But he's there. But it's not Raga De Silva wants it's to come in on any, this I issue that's been raised by Sridhar Rangayan. Raga, you're listening to the response from... No, one second, Deshata Nigam. Please listen to the others as well. I'm coming back to you. I just heard what you're saying. Listen to what Raga is saying. I'm coming back to you. Nikam ji, I have to say something to you, please. That I... You cannot say to me that I'm not legally married. I am legally married. I live in the UK and I'm legally married in the UK. So you cannot make those kind of suggestions or accusations. That's number one. So you should get your facts right. Sorry. Two is, as a married partner, as soon as I come into India, I cross the border into India, that is when the complication starts. I get, I become single. I have the same problem that Sridhar has. In fact, my partner or my wife, if I may call, was quite ill in India two years ago and we were not able to make a medical decision. Now she's married to me and I couldn't make a medical decision on behalf of her. I can't get, I have no, assets should, in Nigam respond to what you're hearing from Raga De Silva. She's citing her own yes. personal case. This is not the case that you're talking about where there's been an accident on the road and there has to be an emergency decision taken by the doctors. Not that. Take another kind of process which someone has to undergo if they get admitted to a hospital. Let me answer uh, Ms. De Silva's specific problem. If India has a reciprocal treaty with the United Kingdom where they respect each other's laws and if she has the recognition of a marriage in uh, United Kingdom, automatically because of the treaty that we have, reciprocal treaty, those laws are recognized in India. Therefore, you do not become single out here. If somebody is doing it, then it is wrong. Let me let me make it very clear on the subject. So far, as the other issue that you were saying, I'm not even talking of emergency procedure. In normal cases also, if there is nobody, the hospitals have to make a call. They cannot refuse treatment. They, if there is nobody, Please understand that this is what the guidelines are. You the hospitals cannot refuse if there is nobody. They have to make a very judicious no, sir, But what if your name is not Desh Ratan Nigam? What if you don't belong to the RSS? Then the hospitals act in the way that they do. You know, because Please, of your current let's, position, let's, you may be able to get this done. For most people, it doesn't no, no, happen no, no, like no, this no, for no, the no, Aam no. of this country, it, Mr. Nigam. It, it is nothing about RSS. It is nothing about Congress. It is nothing about BJP. Let's not get into that field. Anybody, I said anybody, irrespective of his ideological, political affiliations, these are guidelines. Irrespective, and they were there since long time. Please understand that. Just And the person that you're talking about, same-sex marriage, the person can still go there and take care. He may you not want to respond to, to that, Raga De Silva? Yeah, I, I, I don't want just anybody to make decisions on behalf of me when I have a partner. Why should that? I mean, I'm assuming you have a wife. Would you want someone else to make a decision other than your wife? I mean, some random person, some random stranger, sorry. I think I'm, we are asking for a basic fundamental right. I'm asking for the right to be given to my partner on behalf of me for many things. That's a good point. Why is... should some random stranger with no emotional connect with Raga Di Silva or Sridhar Rangayan or anybody else take a life-changing decision on their behalf? Uh, let me answer, Rahul. There are two kinds of rights that we have. And in, if you recall, in the case of hijab, the court said, although the matter is still there, the institutional rights supersede over individual rights in certain cases. Here we are talking about the rights of the society. This concept will come in the Supreme Court, believe me. The rights of society to peace and stability. What kind of a reaction would be there? Sir, but what was the reaction the when rights? homosexuality was legalized? There was so much concern earlier by the likes of you that society will be torn asunder, there'll be all kinds of problems. I mean, I don't know what problems there have been. Actually, things let are more me, peaceful let me, let me. because people from the LGBT community are no longer persecuted or harassed in the way that they were earlier. They have some legal protection which they didn't have earlier. So, Rahul, I am not a prophecy maker. I am only saying in the society as of now, this issue should be discussed in parliament. The parliament in its wisdom thinks. See, my... Sir, parliament is hardly converts. functioning on some issue or the other. Parliament is, is virtually dysfunctional at the moment. That does not mean the legislative function will be taken over by the Supreme Court. That would be the end of democracy in India. 
parliament the day the sufficient pressure is there on the parliamentarians they would not like to lose their votes they will immediately bring it so these what we are discussing is no, the but that is in the case rest. of i know what the reason i disagree with you for what you are saying is because that would be in the case of a majority decision when the majority wants something when it is a minority like the lgbt community there will never be a parliamentary majority in favor of that decision because it's so, a minority right or a minority demand so let me answer that question with the best of my ability we are in a parliamentary democracy where laws are made through majority find another system for india as long as this system exists laws will be made by the majority that is how we work that is how the west minister model functions this is how our constitution provides till that system is there nobody can change that system even the supreme court is bound by their constitutional mandate that the will of the people is reflected through parliament and it has to nihari ka kharan ji wala i'm looking at the hindu marriage act of 1955 the muslim marriage act of 54 the special marriage act of 54 and as i read this i'm wondering what is it that you intend to say in the supreme court to suggest that these laws in the way that they are interpreted actually have scope for marriage between people of the same sex because there's nothing written explicitly in that favor there isn't much written against either but there is nothing there to say that you have explicit permission for same sex marriages how do you intend to argue this in court I'm so glad you asked that, Rahul. And uh, so, uh, to clarify, the petitions we have filed are under the Special Marriage Act. But since you have asked with regards to other religions, to the best of my knowledge, I'll put forward what I can. First of all, of course, these laws do not reflect anything with regards to homosexual marriage. And of course, the Legislative Assembly debates will not either, because at that time these relations were barred by the IPC, so they could not possibly. Secondly. uh just one small point i wanted to bring up why are we acting as though legislature and uh, statute is never changed by interpretation of the court suddenly it's done all the time it's a question of interpretation why are we acting as though the uh, interpretation of the law is not the purview of the judiciary but coming to your point there is gender neutral language used in both the special marriage act and the hindu marriage act and hindu personal laws in hindu personal laws there are several instances where it says to hindus in the special marriage act it says the words any two persons we are strongly of the belief that in keeping with the constitution and the constitution and judgments on the constitution delivered by the honorable supreme court there is room for interpretation in a gender neutral manner otherwise these Uh, otherwise these sections are in violation of constitutional rights that is what we are okay. bringing forward okay sir there is no reference as i read most of the text mm-hmm. of this law to relationship between man and woman is not restricted to that the references are to union between two persons which the likes of niharika will argue before the constitution bench will allow for man man woman See, woman or people from <laughs> the lgbt community to be with See, each other rahul can i say something shiraj Sir Rahul, yeah, for the human civilization to go ahead, or the, for the, uh, the for uh, Sir Rahul, for the human for the human civilization to go ahead for reproduction, there has to be a union of man and woman, not man and man or woman. But that's not being stopped. But that's not being stopped. You're giving that. people the right and to choose. And you are there to reproduce. And you are there to reproduce. And, 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 and in India, and in India, marriage is irrespective of the people who are whatever religion they are following. Sir Rangayan, you know, Sir Rajji, you can reproduce on everyone's collective behalf. We are pure and pious. So, oh, uh, that is, but then, uh, see why? Why? why they, all these arguments that you know somebody is ailing and somebody is uh, hospitalized. These are all fake arguments. Just, just you know, for the sake of argument, there is no but question. Can, uh, why? Uh, we, we, we again and again, I am reiterating. We are strongly behind the government. We, we stand by the government and it stands. That's it. You are an idiotic person who just stands behind the government and not think for yourself. The problem is that you are the filth. We are not the filth. You are the filth. You just follow the government orders, and that's the problem. You need to think for yourself. Make sure that your prayer is working. So, uh, uh, how do how does me marry See, my partner? Remove the prayer that is dirt from your mind. You are ailing. You are sick. You are sick and you are ailing. No, tell you me something. Absolutely, you are you are ailing. You 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 are you have to you need treatment. I'm a healthy man, as healthy as you. I'm a healthy citizen. I pay my no, taxes. No, you are. I work. Well, you, I work. See, for look at the society. What they talk about you. That's all. So you may do anything behind you may do anything behind closed doors, but legitimizing same-sex so, marriage is dangerous for the society. Okay, exactly, I'm coming to the point, Sridhar. You remove so the dirt from your mind, remove the filth so which are importing okay. from the West. 
you are you are living on the filth we you which we are exported from the west this is india speak? this is bharat okay shri raj let's let's not let's not, let's not get personal we are having a debate let's try and restrict no, it to arguments so let's not go down a filthy tube that's not that's not the idea here the good thing is and i think this is important is that there should be open debate because it is when there is debate and discussion that people's views evolve especially when a new idea is being mentioned an idea that society hasn't so far been comfortable with the more conversations take place people weigh the pros and cons okay, and they come that. to a new view or a view which is formed on the basis of what they've heard from the likes of raga shridhar and the others they've also heard shridhar nayar they've also heard teshrata nigam and let's see what happens in the constitution bench as i said 34 countries as of this year have already legalized uh, same sex marriages andorra argentina australia austria belgium brazil canada chile colombia costa rica cuba denmark ecuador finland france germany iceland ireland luxembourg malta mexico netherlands new zealand norway portugal slovenia south africa spain sweden uh, switzerland taiwan the united kingdom united states of america and uruguay so there is a long and, and growing now, list uh and that also would need to be considered by the supreme court when this very important discussion takes place remember in any decision when it concerns the minority can we wait till the majority comes around to that point of view because if we wait it in the same way on the issue of legalizing homosexuality we would have to wait possibly for 100 more years and it still wouldn't have happened and has there been a blowback i'm not telling you what to think i'm leaving it to you we were to think about how much of a blowback has there been from society in fact are people from the lgbtq community now more safe because they have that legal sanction as opposed to being harassed by goons or being harassed by police personnel before that well i'm glad that there's been a debate and i intend to come back to this issue again in the days and weeks to come as we track what happens in the supreme court so to my guess despite your differing perspectives for coming and debating this important issue thank you very much